Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for yet another good day. We bless you for this moment. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us and touch us with your wonderful hand, O oh God. Bless us tremendously. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we are looking at our series, Can These Bones Live? And today we are going to look at another factor that we strengthen our prophecies that make the words of our mouth to be powerful and that no bone will be able to resist in the name of Jesus. So I'm talking about prayers of faith, laboring in making prayers of faith, making prayers of faith, not saying prayers, making prayers of faith. Now that your words have been empowered through explorative study and meditation and faith, and then you have clean lips from a sanctified heart. These are the ones who have treated so far in this series then you will be able to pray more meaningfully and not pray amiss. Your prayer actually should be effectual. Your prayer should be fervent. For your prayers to be fervent, therefore, you must of necessity travail, labor in the secret place, making prayers, not just saying prayers. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it. And it will be yours. Anything you ask for in prayer, if you believe it, it will be yours. That's why we have to treat the issue of faith first before talking about prayers. Because you have to believe what you ask in prayers. And it will be yours. Remember, for your prayers to be effective and effectual, you must travail. You must labor in prayers. It's not just a one-minute thing. It's not a few-minute thing. It's something you do with all your heart and you spend time doing it. Does it necessarily mean that I need to spend a lot of time before I can make effective prayers? No. You can just speak a word or two and it will come to pass. Jesus took time to pray and had, he had a long time, long time in the traveling in the presence of the Lord, in prayers, in colonia with the Father in the secret place. And whenever he came out, it was just a few words he spoke and demons heard him, demons obeyed him. The disciples noticed the difference. They knew that there was a difference between his prayer and their prayers. And they went to him and said, Master, teach us to pray. They would spend less time in the secret if they did at all. And they spend a lot of time outwardly binding, binding, and binding. I remember the case of the lunatic, a boy that had the policy. When the spirit came upon him, that demonic spirit came upon him, he would just converse and even fall into fire. The father brought him to the disciples to heal him. Jesus was on the mountaintop having great time in the presence of God. He spent time in the presence of God. And by the time he came down from the mountain, he met them just praying and praying and praying and sweating. Nothing was happening. The father brought the child to him. And Jesus shook his head and said, how long will I be with you? And he rebuked that spirit from that child. And that child was healed that same moment. And then they came to meet Jesus. Why could we not heal him? And Jesus said to them, this very kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Jesus spent time in the sacred place. In Matthew 6, 6, he said, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. Just simple prayers. Father, I thank you. In fact, it was thanksgiving. Father, I thank you for I know you've heard me already. That statement shows that he had prayed before coming. He had taken his time in his secret place to meet with the Father and settled it with the Father before coming. Because he said, I know you've heard me already. But for the sake of these ones who are here, I am making this prayer. And then that was the end. The next thing, he, he issued that a decree and commanded Lazarus, the dead, to come forth. And the dead came back to life. The bones were quickened. The flesh was quickened. And the spirit gave life to them. And they rose up at the command of the Lord. The Lord that had spent time in prayers. If you spend time in prayers, your word will become very powerful. And that the demons can, withholding that thing cannot withstand it. And every dry bone will hear your word. If you speak that prayer with faith, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, what peace we often forfeit 
what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's what the songwriter wrote. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who we all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come back with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he will take and shield thee. That will find a solace there. That was what the songwriter wrote in that uh, powerful hymn. What needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So everything by prayer, everything, nothing is too small, nothing is too big. Everything, prayers, take it to the Lord in prayers. The end, of, the end effect of the travail of a woman during childbirth is the birth of a child or children. Pains usually precedes miracle and deliverance. By the time a woman travails in childbirth, at the end, she bets her miracle. She bets her fruit. She bets a, a, a new, new level. She bets her glory. John 16, 21. A woman, when she's in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who had heard such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. Isaiah 66, from verse 7 to 13. It will come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And why they are still speaking, I will hear. That's the promise of God to you and I, because we are righteous. Isaiah 65, 24. That is the, the promise of God to everyone that is righteous, that is born again, that is his child. That before you call, he will answer. Why are you speaking? He will hear you. That's why I know that as we pray today, God will surely hear us. As we command every bone to come back to life. And when we now pray, before you finish speaking, may he hear you and answer you speedily in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take everything to God in prayer. Talking about travail, that was exactly what birthed the revival at Azusa Street. And even the waste revival, all were birthed in a place of prayers, word and worship, spiritual labor. Labor pains in prayers, labor pain in studying the word of God, laboring in worship of the Lord, and boom, revival broke out in ways. The same thing happened at Azusa Street. You are my dear children, but agonizing spiritual labor pains once again until the anointed one will be fully formed in your heart. Galatians 4:19. So we must learn to labor, labor, labor in prayers, pray, travail. So by the grace of God, next time we're going to look at some prayer boosters that will make our prayers to be very effective. But today I will stop it here. I want us to pray, to take time to pray and say, Lord, please help me. Give me strength to travel in prayers. Let your grace be made sufficient for me. Give me strength, oh God. Enable me, oh God, the grace to travel, give it to me. The strength to travel in prayers, grant unto me, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then let us pray that whatever it is that is hindering you from being prayerful, let all be removed. Pray to God and pray that God should remove from you whatever is hindering you, whatever is discouraging you from praying and praying to. Let this be removed far from you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us begin to pray. We all need the help of the Holy Spirit. Once again, we, we cannot stop asking Holy Spirit for help and assistance. Pray for, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you in your place of prayer. Pray that your prayer altar be rekindled. Pray for the reestablishment re of your prayer altar. Pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. 
So our memory verse today is taken from Mark chapter 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I believe God that today as you as you go about decreeing things and commanding those mountains to move, commanding dry bones to come back to life, that God will answer you in the name of Jesus, that whatever you ask for in prayers today, that God Almighty, before you finish speaking, that he will answer you and give it to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you touch your children. I pray, oh God, that this word that you have spoken through me to them will make great impact in their lives, oh God Almighty. I pray you strengthen their faith, increase, oh God, their strength, and empower the words of their lips, that every word they speak to dry bones will, be, will surely not return back to them void, They will accomplish that which they have proposed, that what which they have sent it in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray mountains will move. I pray, oh God, valleys will be filled up, and I pray the crooked paths will be made straight for your children in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a great day. I decree a blessed day, a beautiful day, a day full of joy, a day full of strength, and a day full of peace for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, we don't want to end this without giving you opportunity to do that. Pray and say, Lord Jesus, I commit my life to you. I'm sorry. I repent for my sins. I believe in you. You died for my sins. You resurrected, and you are coming back again. And because you live, I want to live also. I surrender my entire being to you. You are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Don't forget, Jesus loves you, and righteousness exhausts a nation. Their sin is a reproach to any people. God bless you. Bye. Hey.